Hey, it's Tommy Hodgins, and I have something really cool to show you about extending CSS with JavaScript. So here I have a constructor for a JavaScript function, and as you can see, most of it is a template. And so when you pass in an object here that includes just a few little pieces of information, those pieces of information are getting plugged into this uh, template string, and then a function is being created from that. Now, using this class, this pattern, I have designed about 30 definitions for things, a uh, custom pseudo class for CSS, like uh, what would an ancestor selector select? It would be, um, you give it two arguments, um, that's the JavaScript code for it. Uh, you can see there's a little definition here for has, there's one apparent selector, so let's see how these get to work, and then we'll write one of our own and see how it comes out in the end. So here I've got an empty CSS style sheet, just regular vanilla CSS, and I've got an HTML page where I've just got a few demo elements, and we're going to play with these in a second here. The last thing that we're doing is we're importing this JS file, so notice that there's no CSS being loaded here at all. We're going to be compiling the CSS to JavaScript. When we do that, any JavaScript powered rules will have functions written for them and won't be included in CSS. And any regular CSS rules will just stay in CSS. So let's add some default styles here so we can see what regular CSS does. Then we'll write some that pull in these functions so you can see how you can use JavaScript powered rules from CSS. And then we're going to define a new pseudo class that doesn't exist so you can see how easy it is to extend CSS to do something it couldn't do just a few minutes ago. So like from dreamed reality in a few minutes. So just hang with me here. Uh, 1px solid current color. So we're going to compile this here with node. So our style sheet file is being read and then we're going to output output.js. So if we go over here, we should see now that just like our style sheet, we have all the li tags have a border. So now I'm going to use one of these functions. I'm going to do the parent one. So all that you need to do to use one of these functions is create an attribute selector that starts with js dash and then uses one of the names of one of these uh, plugins here. And when we do that, it will run the JavaScript custom pseudo class. So if I say JS parent, um, it's, it's kind of like we're doing uh, li parent. And let's give that one a 10px dashed purple border. So now we're going to recompile our CSS to JavaScript. And when we reload here, there's actually two li elements, but the parent is the same. It's this uh, ul. And so that's where that's showing up. So I'm going to do another one here. We have one for has that all it does is whatever you put inside here, it's just going to query selector, true or false. Uh, does it have that or not? So that's something I wish we had in CSS. And as of today, I'm able to write it in CSS. So if you looked here, one of our allies has a span and one does not. So if I say li js has span, we're going to make that one orange. Let me recompile here. And you can see the one that has the span is the one that gets the orange background. So now we're going to do something really fun. We're going to write a CSS rule for a JavaScript function that doesn't exist yet. You and I are going to create one. We're just going to dream it up. We're going to make it. And then we're going to compile it and see it come to life. So this is one for the stopwatches. So let's say um, I've got a lot in here. Some of these compare attributes. Uh, some are more like 
element queries on individual elements. Some of them contains text. That's a fun one. Okay, so uh, same thing here. If we do JS contains text, there's only one that has not, so we can make that one something. So we just matched the li that contains the text not. So we're going to invent one that doesn't exist. Let's say modulo. And we'll give it, we'll start with two. And we're going to do that on this number type input. So we're going to compile this. And because that function doesn't exist, we don't have anything happening. So let's hop down here and create it. Modulo. So we're going to say new custom pseudo class. And we're going to use a very similar object here. I'll just copy it for the sake of time. So the name is going to be modulo. We're going to pass in a selector and we're also going to pass in a number. We're going to match the selector and just for this because we're doing an input I'm going to do the value attribute so I'm going to say tag value modulo number. So now that that custom pseudo class definition exists. Let's recompile this and see if on our page we now have support. So that's fun. Let's try a different number here and see what happens. So just like that, we've gone from having an idea for something to extend CSS, we've gone ahead and created a definition for it, we've written a CSS style sheet which is 100% valid CSS, and we have compiled it to 100% valid JavaScript, and so this can be our entire workflow here for writing styles that can be extended by JavaScript and used right away. Let's check out what is actually in our output file. So the first thing you'll notice included in here is it's outputting the JS and CSS function, which is our event driven virtual style sheet manager. This is the thing that uh, registers the events, populates the style sheets, uh, does all that for us, and we're just using it on the default settings here, so it uh, there may be more that can be done. It'll also output a copy of each plugin that it encountered in the style sheet. So do you remember, we just created this. This is the actual uh, JavaScript from our pattern with the information that we plugged in. You remember, we put selector and number, we wrote this little test, uh, so we templated the creation of this function in just a few seconds, and that's the actual code that runs. Then, these are the JS-powered rules that it has extracted from our style sheet, and for each JS-powered rule, it's written a function call to that function. So this parent has contains text and modulo with the original selector that we used. And in the case of parent, we only passed in the rule for has, we had one argument, so we pass in the argument as well as the rule. Same with uh, contains text, we said contains text not. And here we've got the number. And then all that we have left here at the bottom is it creates a style tag. And we have the remaining rules, which were not JS powered, just the original untouched 
CSS makes it all the way through and we attach that to the document. So as you write more code or change what you have in here, if I take this contains text rule out, when we look in here, it's going to refresh and it won't include that plugin anymore because we're not using it. So anyway, that is one day's work exploration into compiling CSS to JavaScript to make use of very simple definitions, which make use of very simple patterns that allow you to extend CSS in very powerful ways in just a few moments.